Hello, welcome back everyone to a new video and a new playlist in this channel which is about Jetpack Compose and as you can see from now on you will be seeing my face because I think it's better for trust and communication. So as I said this playlist is about Jetpack Compose and basically Jetpack Compose is the modern framework of creating Android apps UI in which we can create UI with our favorite language Kotlin. So we won't be using XML anymore and of course XML came with its own complexities like the complex recycle view and if you need to create a custom view then you need to put that you know drawable or, or in the same layout uh, file which was just so complex but now in Jetpack Compose it's a lot more easier and fun to do. So in this first part we'll just see what Jetpack Compose is, we'll create a, a Jetpack Compose app, we'll explore what folders and packages and files we have on it and what we don't have anymore from XML and also as well we'll create a simple UI with just a screen and a button on it. So without further talking let's jump into Android Studio and get started. So here we are in Android Studio. The first thing we want is to create a new Jetpack Compose project. Just select this one, this empty activity, one with this little Compose uh, logo on it and click next. Uh, give it some path. Let's choose this one and let's give it a name which is Jetpack Compose. And uh, I'm just going to delete this my application thing. And uh, yes, so just click finish to create now our first Compose app. Wait for it to build. Here it is now, uh, it's built and now let's just explore uh, the packages that we have and what we don't have. First thing, we'll see that we don't have the layouts folder anymore in our wrist folder. So if we go right here, we'll see that we no longer that have layout folder because now we create our UI with uh, Kotlin directly here from the uh, Java folder so we don't need that layout folder anymore as I said but we still have these drawables and uh, colors but actually we create uh, our colors in a different file so we'll see where uh, usually we don't use this one anymore but you can use it for some special cases which is something we will also see in this playlist and then we still have our strings and our themes if we want to have a special theme for something uh, we still have our map map for our apps icon, drawable for images, and uh, the only thing we're missing is the layouts folder. So now let's go right here to see what's new to us. The first thing is that we see this near, let's just close this activity, this UI package, inside it we have this theme in which we have three different files. The first one is the colors. And as the name says, we just define our custom colors here so we can definitely create our own colors. So let's just duplicate this and let's name this one a color and then give it some value. Let's say, for example, this blue color. Here we have a custom color, which is just a normal uh, Kotlin variable that we can access anywhere in our app. And uh, we already have these predefined colors. We'll see why we have these uh, and why we need them. So this is it for the colors now let's go to the type and this one is just for fonts let's just create some space here this one is just for fonts basically as i said and here we can define our own colors and uh, specify a color that we want to be the default color of our app and use it throughout all our app that's as well something we'll see in this playlist when we start creating text and text fields in which we want to display uh, fonts or text and uh, we'll see how we can create our own fonts and of course our, our own fonts will be inside the fonts folder that just like XML uh, that we can have in the rest folder right here so this is now for the type file let's go now to the theme which is quite important and then we also see what this is this little window here that we want to close for now in this theme uh, file we define our apps theme or generally how we want our apps colors and components to look like this is where we define that so the first thing we see that is we have a variable for dark theme and light theme and we have these predefined colors that we had in this uh, colors file so these are the light uh, theme colors and these are the dark theme colors and this is the one that we created so we define these which are uh, dark color scheme and light color scheme and then we have this function 
and in this function we have this annotation which is composable and we will see that in this video we'll see why we need that our function has a variable is dark theme that is set to is system in so we use the system basically theme the default system theme so if our device in dark theme that will use dark theme if it's in light theme we'll use light theme and here this dynamic colors that we'll see that as well right now in this content block so the dynamic colors from underweight 12 and above we have something called dynamic colors which are colors that are based on the uh, device wallpaper so let's now open an emulator and see that let's just go right here and open this emulator so here is our emulator and as we can see now our uh, wallpaper has a blue color on it or a blue accent and if we open any app like uh, this messaging app for example we see that all the other colors are also blue so this button is in blue but let's now change the wallpaper to a different one let's choose a different color now this for example orange wallpaper okay here is now our wallpaper and if we click on set and set for home and lock screen wait for it our wallpaper is set and if we open this messaging app again we see that now our icon or our uh, button is in this brown or orange like color basically so these are dynamic colors that change dynamically based on the wallpaper so from underweight 12 and more or underweight s basically and above we support those dynamic colors so we use dynamic colors for that which are these ones for light and dark theme but for Android versions that are less than uh, Android 12, we use these predefined colors that we created in our colors uh, file. So here we have these color schemes and then these use these colors that we define in our fi uh, color file. So let's just create now some space down here. After that, we have this side effect and we'll see what side effect as well and we just define our status bar color the status bar is just let's open an app again it's just this one this let's see I agree this one in which we can see the uh, like time and all the studies that's the status bar color now it's set to the primary color in our app we can change it later if you want to do so and then we call this material theme function in which we pass our color scheme in which we define whether we have dynamic colors or not our typography in which we have our, our fonts and then the content which is what we are going to see now so calling this one is that in our app these are the colors and fonts and the content we have we want to have in our app and in this content function we'll be creating our UI our entire apps UI will be inside this content uh, lambda function which is this one that we have in here now this is it for the theme function I mean the theme file let's just close them and go to our main activity the first thing we want to see that we have these functions and i don't want to tell you what they are right now let's just start simple delete this as well we see that we have the sit content block and in which we call this jetpack compose theme which is exactly the function that we explained right now in which we have this uh, these dynamic colors and uh, content in, in everything about our app theme and ui and then inside that we can create our UI but you might say why just not calling it directly right here we can't we'll get an error because jetpack compose theme function is a composable function and composable functions can only be called inside composable context so this set content block is just like the one that we had from XML in which we pass our uh, layout file but now instead it provides us a composable context in which we can pass our compose theme and if we go to it right now we see that this sit content is not a composable function it's just a normal function but it takes a content that is a composable lambda function in which we then pass our jetpack compose theme function and now from right here we can create our ui so to create a composable function by ourselves let's just now go down here inside inside our activity or outside it anywhere we want let's go inside our activity and create a new function let's first annotate it with composable and say fun let's say first ui for example just for our first one 
and composable functions always need to start with a capital letter uh, unlike normal functions like this onCreate function that starts with a lowercase uh, letter and this such content block as I said is not a composable function so it starts with a lowercase one but this sit, this uh, jetpack compose theme uh, function is a composable one so it starts with a copy to letter and this is very important just for readability and uh, organization we need to do that so right here we can create some ui so we just first create a simple button so we just say button and uh, inside that button we have different things so let's see them let's just format this a little bit we have this lambda call that i want to delete for now and explain it to you later we have this on click lambda function in which we can simply do anything after clicking on that button like navigating to a different screen showing a toast or anything basically we can do that inside this on click lambda function and then we have this uh, other lambda call which is in which we can go right here we see that our button is just a composable function so we call a composable function of course ui in compose is just a, a bunch of functions that we call so a button is a function a text is a function a text field is a function an image everything is just a function that we call and then define its properties its background size and uh, all those stuff now in our button we define its content but if we go inside here we see that we have this content lambda function we'll see what row scope is in the next video we won't worry about this now but uh, we see that our button takes a bunch of stuff of course the most important stuff to uh, to us right now is this on click in which we perform something after clicking on a modifier which is a very important thing actually this is how we define how we want our button to look like and we have a bunch of other things like the shape of our button whether we want to have elevation or not and the color of our button but uh, if we want to define for example the size then we need to use a modifier which is something we'll see as i said now in our button we have this on click and this content call as i said this content to lambda so if we go here this is now the content that we have here in which we can tell what we want to have inside our button we can have an image a text basically anything this is the cool part about jetpack compose inside a button we can simply put anything we want we don't have limitations of what we can put on it anything that is a composable can be set into this content block of our button for now we just want to put a simple text so text like this that we pass this text parameter to it and we say for example click click me like this uh, what's going to happen is that inside our button we have this text that says click me we can then call this composable function which is first ui from our jetpack compose theme and as well we can copy this and create it directly right here if we want to do so we can create it directly right here or we can create it inside a function and then call that function but i think this is better creating it inside a function and uh, now let's just run the app and see how that looks like let's wait for it to build it's building now and here is our ui with our button that says click me and when we click on it we, we get this little ripple effect and uh, the button of course has the same color as our uh, wallpaper or it's color based on the wallpaper because uh, this emulator supports dynamic colors and if we change our wallpaper to this one to this one that has this blue accent on it we open the app it dynamically changes to this blue color so these are dynamic colors so this is it now for this first part and we just saw what jetpack compose is we explored some of its packages how we can create a simple ui we explored these important folders that i mean files that we have on it and the next videos we'll dive deep into creating ui especially seeing uh, what a box is a row a common and a modifier in which we can define how our uh, component looks like so see you in that video and bye